<clears throat> Good morning. I'm back. We're back. Um, for one day. One day, and then we'll be on vacation for a bit. So we beg your indulgence for that. We leave you in good hands. Pastor Rago will will uh, uh, is an excellent teacher and will lead you well through the rest of Second Samuel. Um, we were out yesterday, and I am not going to be leading worship this weekend. Uh, Thursday night, I had some uh, a fever and uh, some rather intense chills for a long time, and uh, I had not ever experienced that before. Um, so, of course, we suspected, you know what, the uh, virus who shall not be named. And uh, we still don't know. So I had a rapid test that was negative, but it's very early for that to be effective. So this is that the timing is such that I can't get a test result back in time to be confident about coming to worship. And I know many people would be very, very concerned if I were to be in worship in contact with that many people if I if I do in fact have COVID. Thankfully, if I do have it, it's a mild case, right? So <laughs> I just don't know what to do about all this. Um, but we're doing the best we can and making the best decisions we can. So this is this is uh, our last worship with you for a bit and uh, looking forward to it. We're singing one of my favorite hymns, actually. Um, don't mark this down as a funeral hymn, though. This is not really for that. But uh, I, since I was a kid, I've always loved m many of the, the, the hymns that are in the hymnal on beginning of service. Why is that? I don't know. They're simpler. They, they seem they may more cheerful. The to more tunes are more upbeat. They were certainly were sung more often. But there's also this sense in these hymns of, I'm glad to be here. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're coming into God's house. Uh, like like uh, Psalm 121, I, my eyes, uh, I look up to the hills where my help comes from. Uh, and uh, I was glad when they said to me, let's go to the house of the Lord. And that fits well with our with our text today, David was uh, happy to bring the ark to God's house. Um, now, things don't go as planned, but uh, joyful to worship the Lord. I hope that you are today, too. So this is hymn number 907. <clears throat> kind of foggy here. Chosen men of Israel 
30,000. And David arose and went with all the people who were with him from Baal Judah to bring up from there the ark of God, which is called by the name of the Lord of hosts, who sits enthroned on the cherubim. And they carried the ark of God on a new cart and brought it out of the house of Abinadab, which was on the hill. And Uzzah and Ahio, the sons of Abinadab, were driving the new cart with the ark of God. And Ahio went before the ark. And David and all the house of Israel were celebrating before the Lord with songs and lyres and harps and tambourines and castanets and cymbals. And when they came to the threshing floor of Nacon, Uzzah put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it, for the oxen stumbled. And the anger of the Lord was kindled against Uzzah, and God struck him down there because of his error. And he died there beside the ark of God. And David was angry because the Lord had broken out against Uzzah, and that place is called Perez Uzzah to this day. And David was afraid of the Lord that day, and he said, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? So David was not willing to take the ark of the Lord into the city of David. But David took it aside to the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite. And the ark of the Lord remained in the house of Obed-Edom, the Gittite, three months. And the Lord blessed Obed-Edom and all his household. And it was told King David, The Lord has blessed the household of Obed-Edom and all that belongs to him because of the ark of God. So David went and brought up the ark of God from the home of Obed-Edom to the city of David with rejoicing. And when those who bore the ark of the Lord had gone six steps, he sacrificed an ox and a fattened animal. And David danced before the Lord with all his might. And David was wearing a linen ephod. So David and all the house of Israel brought up the ark of the Lord with shouting, and with the sound of the horn. Do you? Do you, love, do you love your husband or do you love what he does for you? What you can get out of him? Do you love your wife? Or do you love what, what you can receive from her? What she does for you? It's hard to separate those things. Because often when we talk about how we love someone, we talk about the things that they do. Oh, But loving someone who can do nothing for you, or is loving someone who has become a burden. We all hate to be a burden, right? Uh, and th yet this happens sometimes in a marriage. One person is sick, and the other person has to take care of them. And, uh, and that person is, you know, Grumpy and doesn't want them to take care of them. Who said that? In the way that they're doing. <laughs> okay, right. I'll just be, never mind. We'll discuss this off camera. <laughs> um. <laughs> oh wow, that opens a can of worms. Does Does David love the Lord, or does he love what the Lord does for him? The benefit that he might receive from being close to God. Do you want to be close to God because he is God who created you? Or as long as God is giving you what you desire, what you need, and answering your prayer as in the way that you want it answered. That, that's a... I don't know what to think about David's relationship with the Lord. They're bringing the ark up and... And uh, this man, uh, Uzzah, he manhandles the ark. And it, uh, it sounds to us ex excessively he, harsh. Yeah, because he... That says he lays a hand on him, the ox is almost like, not his fault, right? Except uh, you're just not to do this. This is not just some piece of freight that we're hauling. Um, and, uh, and, and does it mean... <clears throat> Uh, put out his hand to the ark of God and took hold of it. Uh, is it is it uh, that Uzzah was keeping his own balance, or was he saving the ark? Is, isn't even clear about that. 
it was clear that whatever the way in which he did this, it was inappropriate. It was wrong for him to do this. And he and evidently he ought to have known this. God strikes him down. Demonstrates his power and justice and holiness. Uh, we love God when he demonstrates his imminence, his closeness to us, and his love and his mercy and his kindness. We have a different relationship with God when he demonstrates his holiness and perfection and justice towards us. <laughs> We're not so bad with God when he demonstrates holiness, perfection, and justice towards others, the people that bother us. Yeah. But God did that towards the Philistines, and that was okay. But towards us, David says, maybe the ark should be in somebody else's house and not next door to me. Um, Could he simply have been questioning whether he it would have been questioning idea to his worthiness? Bring it at all? What? I, I doesn't. I don't think so. To bring it at all? I mean, well, like, did he inquire of the Lord about whether he should bring the ark? You're right. Out of no, he didn't. I mean, at least it doesn't say that he did. So maybe he was second guessing himself. But then, but then it, it would make sense that now that we have established a place where David will be, that the that the that he wants church to be close by, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Worship to be nearby. So that makes sense. And there wasn't a command that God from God that they should put it some some other place. But then it's it says, "How can the ark of the Lord come to me?" That can mean I'm unworthy. Which is a positive thing for him to recognize that. Or it can mean, uh, I'm afraid of, of God's judgment and maybe he shouldn't be so close to me. Both. Or both. <laughs> Typically, yeah, we have both, all these <laughs> thoughts going on and more than that probably. Until he sees that Obed Edom is being blessed. Now, that's the, yeah. That's, that's where it turns. That's the giveaway, <laughs> yeah. No, well. He's getting all, he's, God's being nice to him. I'm going to get that for myself. You know, I, I hope that you always have that attitude. I want to keep the Lord close because I see he blesses others. But, um, but not because of God's blessing, not because of material things or deliverance from illness or any of those things, but because he's the Lord, because this is God who loves you even when he does harsh things. Even when, even when we don't understand, why did he strike this guy down? Even when we don't understand what God is doing. That we desire him to be close to us. Because this is what God desires more than anything. And when he finally then brings the ark to his own home, uh, to his own city, he dances before the Lord with all his might. Uh, I, I've had many conversations with, with our elders, um, with our pastors, our, our, our church staff team, um, and with other pastors, the, the sadness that we feel that there are so many, uh, who, who have begun to stay away from the Lord's house. Um, we understand, I understand that, that there are some in circumstances that, that, uh, you know, are caring for their health and, uh, and are joining us regularly in worship. But we've also been noting people who haven't been with us in worship at the church or at the school, but who also have not been in worship with us here, uh, on Facebook or wherever, they haven't accessed the, the worship services with us. And, you know them. They are your friends, your, your uh, family. Encourage them. Let them see that it's good when the Lord is near. So that they see in you that you're blessed by this and, and desire also to be close to Him. Uh, that, that is very much on my mind and on our hearts. Um, desiring to see God's people when when health circumstances permit, that God's people would all be back in God's house. But even if not that, that they would be here uh, as we are laboring to make the word available to you to know that God is near. 
And what a joyful thing this is, that we would dance before him, bring him into our homes. Let's pray. Father in heaven, there's law and judgment in this text, but there's so much rejoicing. Because to be with you, there is no better thing. Lord, we pray, visit with your Holy Spirit those who, who have, because of the recent circumstances, uh, their attention has been turned away, uh, they drifted further from you. Lord, they've, they've not been worth worshiping with us in, our, in your house or, or with us uh, electronically. Dear Lord, grant that they would desire your word and they would recognize that empty emptiness in their life and, and join us once again so that we may rejoice to welcome them back. Father, we pray, grant that we, regardless of our circumstances, that we may be like Obed-Edom, that others would see in us the Lord has blessed them. And they would also desire to be near you. Watch over this flock, dear Lord, while Karen and I seek some rest and refreshment in you. Bless them, Lord, and keep them. Uh, strengthen and bless the, the other laborers of our church, uh, Pastor Aaron and Lexi, Sandy and Natalie, John, Amy and Bob, Lord, strengthen them all that they may serve your people and, and that it may be refreshed in one another and rejoice in you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Amen. I'll let you know the results of my test.